morning, Mason Nation. It's Tuesday, October 22nd. Welcome back to Mason Cable News, Mason's morning news program. I'm Britta Bausis. And I'm Crystal Moore. Uh, I wish that we could be at the communications event with Chuck Todd right now, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. I heard about that. It's happening today, actually right now. There's a communication event held in DuPerry with Chuck Todd, who's going to be there, I think, all day today, talking to the so. Mason student body about communication, um, working in the department um, and things of that nature. So well, Mason students should definitely <laughs> check it out and see what's going on um, later today. And I'll be there right after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as part of the Visiting Filmmaker series here at GMU, the Film and Media Studies program will welcome award-winning documentarian Yorba Riken and will be screening, screening her latest film, The New Black. Reichen was awarded the title of Guggenheim Fellow, has worked for ABC News, and received the Creative Promise Award at Tribeca All Access. Her previous films have been honored by institutions such as the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. The New Black underscores the modern relationship between sexuality and race, particularly during the 2012 Question 6 referendum in Maryland, which, legal which legalized same-sex marriage in the state. The film provides a look into homophobia in black churches and the anti-gay political agenda in members of the Christian right, while also giving objective views from both sides of the matter. The New Black uniquely takes on the connected issues of race, politics, and sexuality as civil rights. The free screening of The New Black will take place on Thursday, November 7th at 4.30 p.m. and is open to the public. And after the film, there will be a question and answer session with Yoruba Riken herself. This Saturday, October 26th, is the 27th annual AIDS Walk Washington. Members of the Mason community will come together to support individuals who have been impacted by the deadly disease. Participation in the walk has become tradition for many students, faculty, and staff at George Mason who have participated in the walk for over 20 years. The AIDS Walk Washington is a 5K walk and time run benefiting benefit put it together by Whitman Walker Health, a nonprofit community-based health organization. Whitman Walker Health provides dependable, high-quality, comp comprehensive, and accessible health care to those affected with HIV and AIDS. As expressed by the AIDS Walk Washington website, transportation to the event will be provided by GMU Parking Transportation and Services. Mason to Metros will be running from 6 to 8 a.m. on the morning of the run walk to accommodate participants. Along with a free ride to, ride to the event, participants will also receive a free t-shirt. AIDS Walk Washington, held at Freedom Plaza on Pennsylvania Avenue and 13th Street, will feature numerous stories and shows and activities including music performances, guest speakers, and warm-up exercises for those in attendance. The 5K run will begin at 9.15, followed by the walk at 9.20. All guests are invited to stick around at the run walk as concluded for a post-walk celebration with musical performers and recognition of the top fundraising individuals. You can register for the walk at AIDSWalkWashington.com. If you're interested in joining the GMU team, please make sure to search for Mason Team on the registration site, located under Colleges and Universities. A kiosk about the event will also be held in the JC tomorrow between 10 a.m. and 11.50 today. For more information about the walk, please contact George Mason Center for Leadership and Community en Engagement at leaderserve at gmu.edu or check out the Mason Facebook page typing in AIDS Walk DC, George Mason University. Sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely want to try to go to the AIDS Walk this yeah, weekend. Definitely. Well, fairly recently, websites like Twitter and nytimes.com have been crippled by cyber attacks, causing the sites to be unavailable for hours at a time. Unsurprisingly, some proactive George Mason University researchers are leading teams to stop the efforts of such aggressors. Sushil Yahodia, director of Mason Center for Secure Information Systems, or CSIS, housed in the Volganeo School of Engineering has received a five-year, $6.25 million grant from the Department of Defense to lead a team of researchers toward developing cyber defense systems to prevent future attacks. Yahoria will be working with Massimiliano Albanese, an assistant professor in CSIS, and Kun Sun, a research professor in CSIS, and researchers from the University of Michigan, Pennsylvania State University, and Dartmouth College. George Mason was one of just 15 academic institutions awarded a grant out of 193 submitted white papers and 43 proposals. 
The awards are a part of a competition conducted by the Air Force Office of Scientific Research, the Army Research Office, and the Office of Naval Research under the Department of Defense Multidisciplinary University Research, or MURI, program. Congratulations to all the Mason professors who received this amazing grant. Congratulations indeed. Well, October not only marks the beginning of Halloween festivities, but is also National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Wellness, Alcohol, and Violence Education and Services, also known as WAVES, along with the Student Nurses Association and the Sisters of Zeta Tau Alpha, hosted Breastival this past week, a lively event that aimed to raise awareness about the life-threatening disease. One in eight women are affected by breast cancer, and every 13 seconds, a woman dies from the disease. Breastival was created as an interactive way to help educate students and faculty about breast cancer through the use of games, prizes, and even food. Breastival also worked to identify the steps that can be taken to help combat the life-threatening disease, along with educate the Mason community on health resources available to them. Held in North Plaza on October 17th, faculty, staff, and students had the opportunity to learn about risk factors, signs, symptoms, early detection, and how to conduct self-breath exam examinations. The Student Nurses Association provided life-saving information. Each year, 200,000 women and 1,700 men are diagnosed with breast cancer. However, according to information provided by WAVES, when detected early, the five-year survival rate can be as high as 98%. WAVES believes that after attending Breastable, Mason community members will feel empowered to make informed decisions about their health. Now it's time for your event rundown. From the Mason Wind Symphony and Fairfax Wind Symphony Orchestra Concert, we'll be holding a concert. Prices for tickets will be $10 and $5 on purchase.tickets.com. Any fans of Wind Symphony should come on out and check it out. Tomorrow outside Southside from 10.30 to 1.30, there will be the Way the Waste event. For this event, members of the GMU Organic Gardening Association will see how much waste there is in Southside by weighing the trash. Anyone interested in this should come out and see it. And Way the Waste isn't the only event happening tomorrow. The Kappa Week 2013 comedy show will be hosted in Dewberry Hall of the Johnson Center from 7 to 11 p.m. The brothers of the Mew Mew chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity will host comedians across the, from across the nation for the GMU community. Anyone who loves comedy shows, which is pretty much everyone, <laughs> should come out and see some of the different array of comedians. Over the weekend, George Mason renewed two of our in-state rivalries that dated back to the old CAA days. Now that all schools are together once again in the Atlantic 10, all teams have found out that the tension still remains. First on Saturday, the women's soccer team faced the Richmond Spiders in their fifth Atlantic 10 matchup. The game started off with very little drama until in the 51st minute, Richmond got on the board. Both teams continued their lackadaisical movement and it all looked over for the Patriots until there was less than 10 minutes left to go in the game when Emma Starr took a spectacular shot outside the box that found the back of the net. The goal then forced overtime and eventually a second overtime. With less than a minute left, the Spiders took advantage of playing with an extra player due to a red card against Mason earlier in the game and scored the game-winning goal on what appeared to be an offside play. Nonetheless, Richmond got the 2-1 victory, putting them in 10th place in the conference and dropping Mason down to 4th. The more notable rivalry that every Mason student loves to talk about started another chapter Sunday night as the men's soccer team took on the VCU Rams. From the opening kickoff, both teams kept the fans on the edge of their seats as Mason and VCU had the opportunity after opportunity to score. There was a scare for Mason in the 31st minute when the ball bounced off a bunch of Rams players and got past the Mason defense, but luckily an offside penalty neglected it. Both respective goalkeepers, Stefan Krauss and Andrew Wells, kept the scoreboards at goose eggs for the remainder of the game as the second game of the Commonwealth Clash ended in a tie. The tie now has VCU in third place in the Atlantic 10, while Mason is sitting back in sixth. In case you missed Mason Madness, check out the Mason Cable Network YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Tyler Byram. Now back to Britta and Crystal. All right, thanks for that, Tyler. Thank you. So here are some tweets provided from students at George Mason who were, er, who were in attendance at Mason Madness. And that concludes today's Tuesday segment of Mason Cable News. I'm Crystal Moore. And I'm Britta Bausis. Stay classy, GMU.